Hello everyone, I hope you're doing okay. This is Elliot Burgess here from CUBE, uh, and I'm going to be talking through uh, transforming compliance with artificial intelligence today. Um, a few kind of housekeeping <clears throat> matters before we start. We have a running kind of Q&A uh, going, so if you have a question, please do type it in uh, on the side there, and um, my colleague Lucy will be monitoring the questions, and hopefully we can get around to answering some <clears throat> at the end of the talk. We should hopefully be going through the talk at about half an hour, 35 minutes, and have some time in the end for, for questions and answers. Um, excellent. So, so today, I'm going to be talking through transforming compliance with artificial intelligence. Um, we're going to be going through a series of use cases. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about some of the um, emerging technologies within the AI space and how they have been designed or worked towards um, solving some challenges that traditional compliance um, Activities are, are facing. <clears throat> so a bit about me. I'm I'm Elliot. Obviously, I'm the head of product at a company called Cube, which is a, a reg tech uh, vendor in in this space. Um, I've been working and developing reg tech solutions for the past five or six years with a financial services uh, spin on it. Uh, I've worked with some of the largest institutions, uh, financial institutions in the globe, solving some complex challenges, especially around reg change management regulatory reporting and other kind of specialist areas. Um, and, and that's me, really, there. I've got my contact details there if you want to get in touch with me after the call. So what are we covering today? Uh, so we're going to cover some, some major uh, themes, you know, scene setting, what, what is the compliance and AI hype in 2019. Uh, we're going to go through what I think are some of the top compliance challenges in 2019, and then dovetailing with that, some of the emerging technologies in the AI space and beyond that are coming out in the, or have been coming out in the last few years. Um, we're then going to go into a bit of a deep dive into two particular use cases, uh, one around uh, red change management and the other around anti-money laundering and financial crime, and look in more detail about how, how these solutions are becoming more prevalent from an AI point of view uh, today. So these will be real-life use cases that we've that I've been involved with or that I've seen within the industry um, in the last couple of years. And finally, we'll, we'll go you know, back over an overview what the forward roadmap looks like for AA and compliance uh, and what kind of industry initiatives are driving, driving reg tech and AI forward. Okay, so let's, let's crack on. So why transform compliance? I mean, there's a, there's a, a real um, challenge at the moment in the in the land of financial services compliance, which can be kind of presented here in these in these kind of um, concepts. So we at Cube, when we talk about the challenges facing compliance officers, we bucket it into three kind of categories. There's a huge volume of regulation coming out on a daily basis. You know, some of the larger legislative initiatives that have been um, published in the last few years, such as MIFID II, MADMAR, they're running at, you know, tens of thousands of pages. It's just a huge amount of information to consume, to process, to implement, and to ensure compliance with. And the volume of new regulation coming out since the financial crisis has just been uh, dramatic. Um, the velocity is also a key variable in why traditional compliance processes are really um, not, up to, not up to handling um, the um, not up to handling the uh, volume. So the velocity is really where we have huge numbers of regulatory content coming out every week, up to 45 um, new regulatory documents and events being published on a, on a weekly basis um, to be processed through the compliance and traditional compliance processes. We also have a huge number in the tens of thousands up to 100,000 uh, updates being published for regulation uh, on a yearly basis globally. So this really becomes a challenge uh, for firms when they have, for instance, implemented a particular regulatory rule or initiative, but nevertheless updates, amendments, and changes to those initiatives are coming out, and it really is a, is a, is a challenge to unpick the, the kind of technology in, in, um, that they've been implementing and rework those in, in light of the new updates. And the variety is huge too. So there is a huge amount of regulation published now, which spans many subject areas, and the cost is absolutely massive. <clears throat> so what does this really mean for firms? From, from my point of view, and what I've seen over the last few years, is that uh, we're starting to see regulation really become a data challenge for firms. There's simply too much content and too much change happening uh, too quickly for traditional compliance models to cope. 
uh, and this has led to you know, major enforcement and fines and sanctions across the board. Um, we have some statistics out last year that um, between uh, the global financial crisis in 2009 and 2018, over 321 billion US dollars in fines were levied against the financial services industry for all kinds of breaches across the board from the selling of mortgages to financial crime and anti-money laundering to regulatory reporting violations. And so this really is a huge industry and one that needs to be um, revitalized uh, and addressed with, with new technology. So what is, so what is the new technology? Um, that we're talking about. So AI is, is a term that's been used um, quite extensively around, along the industry, um, and there's a, there's a reason why this hype is, is, is coming out. Um, the expectation really has been set by commercial products, you know, Amazon Alexa, Google Home, Apple Siri, et cetera, et cetera. And these are making the daily lives of people easier. You know, you can set calendars, you can change appointments, recommend films, TV shows, and in a greater sense of the world, the bankers and the financial institutions are sitting there saying, you know, if Netflix can show, tell me what show I need to watch, then why can't I have a system which tells me which policy I need to update based on a new regulatory change? And that's the kind of space we're looking into. Um, there's a you know, huge rise in financial crime and cybercrime, particularly, which is driving firms uh, and you know the global economy itself to become much more aware of how to deal with this kind of attacks and that's driving automation um, within the space of tracking those down. And we're starting to see some innovative firms, some larger financial institutions um, spending large amounts of money doing complex um, POCs and running um, uh, workshops to understand how they can begin to automate many of their processes. Only Mellon's a good example. They've been running auto automated robotic process automation. That's giving them some really really good results, and that drives the industry forward in, in terms of thinking about and adopting these new technologies and techniques to help solve those challenges. It's not all about um, cost saving, though, or cost efficiency. A huge number of the AI projects that are being launched by some of the larger firms are also mainly about reducing their risk, reducing their risk from a reputational point of view, uh, as well as reducing their risk from uh, from a fines enforcement actions uh, point of view. And finally, the regulators are really coming to the fore here. So there are some innovative regulators out there in the world who are, who are adopting and driving forward um, specific AI technologies to solve for problems. And they are you know, mainly in the UK. So the FCA is a driving force here in the UK for um, pushing forward RegTech. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in other areas of the world as well. So the Monetary Authority of Singapore in the APAC region are a key player in this space. And um, we're, we're starting to see now some of the US regulators, the CFTC, the SEC, FINRA, et cetera, um, moving into this space and really driving forward the, the latest um, uh, conversations within the industry about adopting technology and AI to solve some of these complex challenges. So what are some of these complex challenges? Um, this hey, is my yeah, sorry. Can I jump in for a second? Um, sure. It'd be really great actually if we could um, run a run a poll at this point. Um, let me just put the voting live. So, what I'd like to hear from the audience is actually, what, what do you see as the biggest compliance challenge uh, in 2019? So, if you have a look at the bottom of your screen, you should see the the options um, for you to vote. So, you have uh, regulatory change, AML, financial crime, trade surveillance. Uh, technology and cyber risk, or something else. So if you want to just uh, press one of the options, it would be great to, to get a view of what the audience think. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, so please please vote away. Um, and I may well just dive into explaining a little bit of, about what each one of these um, areas are, and then we can have a look at the results um, yep, in a minute or great. so. Thanks. And see what everyone thinks. So I mean, uh, I assume uh, most of the people on the call will have will have an understanding of what these areas are. Reg change management is is really the, the kind of event driven notification and workflow problem where huge compliance teams typically have a very tough time um, capturing and and assessing the impact of new regulatory developments from um, many countries, and that's a big challenge, and that really drives 
um, the, the latter challenges down. So if you cannot successfully capture changes in regulation, you're going to have a hard time implementing the kind of trade surveillance or reporting or technology risk capabilities that you need if you simply are not aware of the regulatory updates. So that's a large challenge. AML and financial crime, relatively self-explanatory. Um, huge fines now being levied at firms who cannot maintain AML efficiently. Trade surveillance is, is, a, is, a, is a particular strain of, of essentially financial crime where, where firms have to look in and on themselves, ensure that their own shops are in order, making sure that they're monitoring the activity of their trading desks to ensure that compliance is maintained. Trading transaction reporting, again, is a big one where data is key. Processing that information is a huge one. Uh, presenting it back to the regulator and reporting it accurately in a timely manner. Information governance, um, around, particularly around GDPR, where we have um, particular rules that determine how long particular data can be retained or when it needs to be destroyed. GDPR bringing in the right to be forgotten has really um, shed a light onto that space in recent years. Technology risk and cybercrime, huge area of concern for many organizations and many regulators now, financial regulators, cracking down um, on, on the processes and policies that firms maintain in terms of their uh, technology risk anywhere, anything from you know, password strength to um, cloud security and cyber risk uh, breaches. And KYC, the tr traditional KYC customer onboarding uh, processes, which have come under huge um, changes, especially in Europe with uh, Anti-Money Laundering Directive 5 coming on board as well with various other nuances there. So we have some results now. Let's take a look. So it looks fairly split between reg change and tech risk and cybercrime with a few other um, points of view on AML and a couple of others. And I think that really drives home the point um, that we we're making. So yes, reg change is a hugely important aspect that really informs the rest of these uh, challenges. If you, can't, if you can't get a grip on what regulation is coming down the pipe, uh, and what the impact is and, and the change cycle around it, you can have a very difficult time implementing structured processes for the rest of these areas. And tech and cyber, tech, you know, tech risk and cybercrime is a huge, huge area, um, particularly in recent years that has come to the fore. And as I said, now especially regulators in Singapore, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, are cracking down hard on organisations who don't have their uh, house in order when it comes to technology risk. That's great. Thank you very much, everyone, for your participation there. We may come back to some of those areas um, at a later date, and definitely we're going to dive down into reg change management as a particular use case um, to look at there. So along with the challenges that firms face from a compliance point of view, we then also need to flip the coin and look at the types of technologies that are driving artificial intelligence in this space, uh, which are here. So uh, again, uh, Artificial intelligence is a, is a broad categorization of different types of processes and technologies that we see. So not strictly some of these on this list you wouldn't consider true AI, but they inform or provide um, a platform for AI to exist. Uh, and these are you know, big data, semantic web technologies, NLP, machine learning, speech pattern recognition, RPA, and rule extraction. These are a smattering of different technologies and techniques that I um, have come across in my time. And again, I can just um, run through these to, to, give, to give everyone a, a general sense of, of what we're talking about here. So big data, uh, yeah. So big data is effectively uh, allowing us to achieve more sophisticated uh, machine learning natural language processing systems. Big data has been around for a long time, <clears throat> but what we really see is some advanced um, Big data processes and database technologies, NoSQL databases, GraphDB, triple stores, that really allows for the kind of scale uh, and processing capability that we need to do the advanced processing of the latter kind of AI techniques, uh, NLP, NER, machine learning, deep learning. Uh, and bringing this together with, with cloud computing uh, and clustering capabilities, you really do have the basis for scale that requires you to do these mass compute exercises. So whilst big data typically cannot be considered an AI technology. It really forms the basis for allowing AI to, to, to exceed. Semantic web, this is really where we start getting into some of the more, um, I guess, technical aspects of, of, of some of the elements of AI. It's, key, it's a key element um, that I've been heavily involved with personally over the years. 
uh, and the semantic web you know, offers a series of languages and processes to create <clears throat> and maintain true linked data. It's a hugely powerful capability, uh, and it allows us to process um, and, and create linked data in a way that we can um, really start to understand relationships between concepts and things in a much, in a much more uh, structured way than we can do in typical kind of relational database technology. Natural language processing, again, it kind of forms, it falls off the back of uh, semantic web. It, it's leveraging the knowledge built in ontologies and taxonomies that are defined within semantic web technologies in RDF and, and triple stores. Um, and it really, it really allows us to, um, and it's hugely, hugely beneficial, especially in the reg change use case, which we'll dive into in a second, where we can start to do huge text processing and understanding the impact of regulatory obligations as they come in. And the semantic web, I will just add, um, uh, the principles of them were laid down by Tim Berners-Lee that created the internet. It supports many other um, processes on the internet that you will be familiar with, the internet of things, but also things that you use on a daily basis that you <clears throat> may not necessarily be aware of. So um, you know, Google search and Wikipedia rely heavily on, on, the, on the technologies and languages of the semantic web and linked data. Uh, machine learning and deep learning, so these are the classic AI processes. I um, mean, you could spend years of your life understanding and refining your knowledge on deep learning. Needless to say, it gives a, a high level, uh, it, we, it, we need a high level of quality testing data for machine learning to produce accurate results. And even the smart, smartest kind of scientists can't really explain why they're getting the results they're getting, getting. But from a compliance point of view, we're really interested in things like pattern matching capability to detect variances and trading patterns or to assist in the automated assessment of reg changes onto firms' infrastructure and data. Uh, and this is the kind of key element that we see, uh, especially um, hugely influential in the kind of um, trade surveillance use case uh, and particularly in AML financial crime use cases, which we'll get into in a bit more detail later. Speech pattern recognition, um, you know, fairly self-explanatory in, in, in principle, but it's very hard to achieve uh, in, in reality. Really here we're looking at technologies that can take spoken word and conduct sophisticated pattern analysis, inferred bias detection, monitoring, and it has been a key technology um, that's been uh, looked at and implemented <clears throat> for detecting the market manip manipulation on the trading desks, things like monitoring unconventional uh, trader communications, telephone calls, uh, WhatsApp messages, voice calls, and all those kind of things. Uh, and there are some huge advances in that space, and voice recognition, um, that, that's really driving forward the yeah, increased surveillance monitoring platforms um, that are coming into the market. RPA, robotic process automation, again, not strictly artificial uh, intelligence, um, but it really does form the backbone for many uh, machine learning and deep learning principles. Uh, and rule extraction is a key is a key element that is kind of born out of NLP uh, and semantic web that we can leverage those technologies where systems can begin to extract and suggest uh, rules, specific rules that firms should be adopting wholesale into their controls, policies, uh, and systems. Um, it also allows for the, the compression of rules, um, where a whole series of suggested rules <coughs> um, can be drilled down into one universal rule which covers all of the elements. Uh, and this, is, this is particularly an area where my firm, Cube, is, is highly invested. We have a, a solution around information governance and, and data retention where we use the rule extraction and compression methodology um, to huge effect, where, for instance, um, you would have retention rules that span um, numerous uh, countries that all have different types of retention rules. So, for instance, in the US, they may infer that you need to retain certain data for seven years. In the UK, it's five years. What we are able to do is kind of aggregate all of those particular rules around a particular um, asset that you're maintaining um, and present back the kind of the universal rule, the rule that would state you need to retain these records for the highest threshold available. And that's kind of what rule extraction and compression is there to do. Right, so what can we make of all this? So the reality is that different compliance problems really need different solutions. So you can see here, this is my uh, little um, chart of the types of technology and processes within AI that I think can address particular challenges within compliance. 
as we were saying earlier, the information governance and tech security risk um, areas because they have much more prescriptive rules um, around uh, what you can and can't do, what data you can and can't store, what information uh, governance and cybersecurity rules you need to have, we can enforce rule extraction on top of those because the information and the regulation is very prescriptive. Natural language processing can help us deconstruct the meaning of those uh, requirements, and rule extraction can help us match similar requirements and find um, the, the, the most um, the strongest requirement that a firm needs to meet. Classic example of this, and one that I've been closely working with on the technology risk side, is, is uh, something as simple as password strength. Um, many organizations, many standards, many regulators will provide guidance and best practice around what password strength needs to look like. Um, but it's very difficult for a large financial institution that's operating in 100 countries to really drill down and find the, the, the gold-plated requirement for password strength. But using NLP and the semantic web to build an ontology of uh, technology risk requirements where passwords would be a particular concept, you can then use NLP to process the vast volume of regulation within that space, extract out all of the obligations related to passwords, and then use rule extraction methodology to then rank which requirements um, are the highest um, level, and then the firm merely adopts the highest um, requirements. So if one particular organization said it needs to be 20 alphanumeric cap uh, characters with a series of symbols, and that's the highest uh, spec, then they could just simply adopt that rule and therefore ensure that they are compliant with every other uh, regulatory requirement underneath it. And that's one of the you know, very simple use cases that we're seeing uh, coming about from prescriptive rule extraction for information governance and cybersecurity. Uh, but uh, today, we're going to focus on two use cases, one on web change management and the other on AML and financial crime dive down a little bit deeper into um, some of the challenges, the traditional challenges that compliance is facing in this space, and the way in which um, AI technologies are being implemented today to help solve some of those challenges. So the reg change management challenge. We've kind of touched on this um, briefly at the top of the call. The real challenge for large organizations is simply um, coping with the volume and complexity of regulatory change um, as it is published, and more importantly, the impact of that on large and complex organizations um, that they work for. Um, a large portion of my, my life and my career has been spent trying to solve this particular challenge, <clears throat> and, and the problems are really, are really vast. So a large financial organization that operates in 50 to 100 countries will have a number of um, isolated compliance teams, for instance, a compliance team in the US, compliance team in the EU, compliance team in APAC, etc., and then a group or global compliance team. Now, typically and traditionally, those compliance teams will all have various methods by which they are monitoring um, new regulatory changes for given uh, locations and areas and jurisdictions to which they are uh, responsible for. And the biggest single challenge in that scenario is there is no, there is no one um, feed of regulatory content that they can rely on. There's no one vendor out there in the traditional space which is providing every single regulatory update in real time to these um, people. So they're relying on myriad um, smaller systems. They're relying on um, RSS feeds and email notifications. They're relying on simply you know, navigating to a regulatory website and refreshing a page every so often. And the collection method for picking up those regu that regulatory content is, is diversified and not centralized. So there's a huge risk to the firm of missing really important regulatory changes and updates, which they could later be uh, fined for or slapped across the risk for, for by regulators. That's the ingest process and problem. The secondary problem then is, is the interpretation and impact assessment of regulatory change when it comes into the bank. Um, and it, what I've seen over the years in this area is that there is usually not a single central methodology for how large organizations will conduct the impact assessment process for new regulation and how it will impact you know, the business, the processes, the controls, the functions, the business operations, <coughs> et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and there's usually, in many of these cases, a huge amount of subjectivity that goes into these 
assessment where it generally can travel through a number of different areas of the organization, compliance, legal, front office, business impact assessment, where they will take um, a long time and have many um, kind of meetings around what the impact assessment is likely to be. Um, and that can cause time, they can get it wrong, uh, and that really does re increase a high risk to them. It's also hugely human intensive. Uh, these are not uh, cheap humans. These are very qualified, experienced, and expensive professionals in compliance um, and legal who are spending a large portion of their time doing relatively, um, relative, relatively low kind of uh, low value work. You know, refreshing websites, trying to download PDFs, uh, reading through things and categorizing them into buckets where they could be in a perfect world spending much more of their time doing high value tasks uh, like the actual analysis and change of processes uh, and policies in line with the regulation or lobbying out to various governments and trade associations for you know impeaching the changes to regulation that that high value in information and there's no single overall view of what the impact of all of this regulation is on a particular uh, control set or policy set or operations and that's a major challenge and firms are firms are really suffering um, from this uh, change management process as a whole so what what can we do to solve for that so Elliot, uh, sorry to jump well, in um, but just um it was interesting that you were mentioning sort of some of the challenges particularly associated with regulatory change but I think it might be a good point to maybe try another poll <laughs> and yeah, uh, just find out um so if you have a look at the bottom of the screen you'll see that there's a question uh, which is what do financial institutions fear the, uh, the most in relation to compliance so um is that being unable to evidence compliance to the regulator uh, the cost of compliance the uh, limitations of, of certain types of technology um or the inability to track current and upcoming regulations and understand how that impacts the firm as we've been discussing. So we'll let that run for a minute, give people some time to answer. And we've seen some of the answers coming through now. Yeah, thank you. If you if you could cast a vote that would be that'd be really useful. Early polling suggests <clears throat> it's a fifty fifty split split between the cost of compliance, which is huge driving cost, um, the ability to track upcoming regulations, yes. Um, which is a large part of what I was, I was speaking about uh, earlier. There we go. If we just give it a couple more seconds and then we can stop this one. Okay, and I'll um, stop the vote in there. Thank you, Elliot. No worries. Thank you, Lucy. So, results are in. It looks like uh, the inability to track current and upcoming regs is top of the list, closely followed by the cost, uh, and quite an even split really, yeah, being a, unable to evidence compliance with the regulator is a key one and one that, you know, reporting is, is very difficult um, to achieve. So let's skip forward now. So what, what are some of the what are some of the ways in which technology is solving for these challenges? Um, so a large part of as I said before my uh, career has been spent um, looking at ways in which we can solve for these challenges, uh, and and the real work, the real way is is actually a connect is a linkage of a myriad different um, techniques and processes <clears throat> to come to a single solution. So the first challenge that we see being solved by um, a level of automation and technology is really the scraping and crawling and collecting of regulatory content into a single source and feed. So this is really um, leveraging um, spider uh, technology, some web crawling technology that can monitor vast um, amounts of regulatory content, vast amounts of URLs and web pages, and really pick up um, any changes, any, any detection of regulatory updates in a real-time um, scenario. And that's a crucial part. It needs to be real-time. We need to be ensuring we're picking up all of the right content, not missing things from different regulators. So a real value prop of introducing technology into this process is fully automating, no human involved, the collection of that regulatory data. The second major element of it is then placing and structuring that information <clears throat> into a, a big data database, um, for instance, a NoSQL or graph database. If we can do that, we can then 
um, process the content that we're capturing, which is coming in many formats from many regulators. Some, some regulators still publishing heavy PDF file formats, some regulators publishing more structured formats, HTML, XML, etc. Um, but what we really want is a single unified schema where we can ingest and structure regulatory content in a uniform way and process it and publish it into a graph database or, or NoSQL database. And this allows us to then um, structure the regulatory information at the document, section, paragraph, and sentence level, which becomes much more powerful when we're trying to do impact analysis of particular regulatory obligations. The final and well, the third kind of or fourth stratosphere within the within the solution um, that uh, that AI in general can bring to reg change is then processing um, that inf that regulatory information against regulatory ontologies from the semantic web where we can build and define uh, concepts and topics of regulatory content <clears throat> in a central universal uh, ontology and then use NLP to process the content of regulation against that, those ontologies to give us um, matched results where we, for instance, can take, uh, give it a UK, a UK example, the FCA handbook, for example, the entirety of the FCA handbook, process it against a rich ontology of regulatory concepts um, map each particular section and paragraph from the FCA handbook to one or more of the topics. Maybe there's some topics related to credit risk, maybe there's some topics related to mortgage lending, maybe some topics related to transaction reporting um, to really um, imbue meaning onto the content. And once we've uh, leveraged ontologies and natural language processes to do that first level of enrichment, we can then begin to ingest firms policies, processes, controls, and organizational hierarchies, and automate the assessment or the mapping of regulatory statements onto the internal infrastructure and compliance artifacts that firm leverages. And that's really where, that's really where the humans begin to get involved in the whole process. So effect, an effective reg change management solution um, that's leveraging AI will be sourcing single um, it will be a single source of regulatory developments. It will be processed and standardized to a certain um, uh, format. It will be the automation of the assessment and analysis onto um, processes, uh, controls, and policies it will be fully automated based on the natural language processing and onto ontological mapping. And there, humans will be focused on the very high-value tasks of them implementing the relevant changes where required and monitoring uh, the business processes and practices against the regulatory change model. And this is, this is a very similar um, type of setup than some of the ones that I've built in the past as a, as a product manager, uh, chaining a number of automated AI processes together to ensure we get the right results at the end. That's one way in which AI is solving red change management, and this is something that's that's um, becoming more and more prevalent in the market today. There are a number of vendors out there who are talking about implementing solutions like this uh, at scale for large organizations, and many large firms um, are really looking at this space and the types of technologies and AI capabilities within this model uh, to implement a universal red change management process for them. The second use case um, that we'd like to run through just quickly is the AML and financial crime challenge. And this is a very um, uh, well-known challenge. The real challenge is that you have a whole series of um, safe actors who are you know, collecting income from certain areas, investments, uh, salary. And they're depositing those into to, to a bank, which then the bank in, integrates and in, in, interfaces with the financial system as a whole. Um, uh, and that's where, the, where their money goes. But then if you have a bad actor, someone who's potentially uh, taking in their money through tax evasion or tax fraud, they um, have basically a three-step process to push their uh, money into the financial system in order to be successfully laundered. They place their money either into the bank directly or into, via a third party, then gets implemented in the bank and layering occurs where they start to move money about to different accounts. And finally, that bank then integrates with the financial system uh, where that money gets laundered fully and then comes back up to the, to the bad actor. This is a huge challenge um, and one that particularly um, regulators in the UK and the FCA are focused on 
um, initially. And the real challenge with this is that there is effectively a single point of failure, which could be the initial bank that's ingested uh, and onboarded the client or taken the money. Uh, once it gets to that bank, they then adopt the trusted um, uh, kind of label, and they can they can integrate with the financial system at will, um, and really only relying on their own internal AML screening and processes. The large problem, and there are trillions and trillions of US dollars a year that are being um, laundered um, illegally through the financial system. Um, so a way, or a number of ways, in which AI can solve for that is by uh, adopting um, a more kind of robust approach. And there was a, a question from the audience which I looked at, which said, what about blockchain? Um, which is a great question. And we're now looking at a particular example which can leverage the blockchain. Uh, and really what we're seeing here is that leveraging the semantic web uh, and leveraging the network effect and blockchain, we can allow for firms, for banks, to share anonymized screening data for all of their uh, customers. And when a particular bad actor is discovered, they then no longer can um, uh, simply pick up and move shop, go to a different bank, start up a different uh, account, uh, try to launder their money through there. Because in, in, in this world, all banks are sharing anonymized data through the blockchain about the um, screening information they're getting, which will then uh, render um, this particular bad actor um, incapable of going to any one of the regulators, so any one of the banks themselves, because they are sharing data and honesty of the blockchain. It's just simply not allowing them to be onboarded. And those bad actors can be flagged, blacklisted, and ultimately sent down to regulators or the correct authorities. And this is a particular use case and example that has been um, addressed within a number of the reg regulator FCA scenarios that we'll talk about in a minute. So we're coming to coming to a close now and we will we will pause here and then wait wait to answer some questions. So where what really is the, the future of compliance? So from my point of view I think whilst we have some really good use cases of how some forms of AI are being used to address these challenges today, we're still a long way away from a com complete end to end view of how AI can be integrated across across a large financial institution for all areas. I think that innovative firms, larger institutions who have the money and the, the desire and the pressure from regulators to, to push this technology will continue to do so. And there's lots of good, um, good examples of, of um, you know, POCs um, and, uh, being run today by those large organizations. I think the reg tech firms in the market will need to rise to meet the challenge. Um, it's, it's a growing industry. Um, more and more actors are coming in um, from a vendor point of view on a, on a daily basis. But we really need to prove out the specific solutions that those, um, that those firms are facing. Um, I think what we're seeing as well is some of the larger financial institutions, they're already scaling large internal teams that are very well versed in these AI disciplines, particularly semantic web technologies, big data and machine learning. So more and more so, I think we will begin to see AI becoming uh, a, a discipline that banks and financial institutions adopt. Um, and we're seeing now in certain patches um, areas of the industry taking on the mantle of pushing reg tech and AI forward. But I think there's large scope for much more industry participation um, and everyone getting involved in defining what um, AI uh, and how it addresses regulatory compliance can be solved. So what are some of the initiatives? Um, so there are a couple of, of, of um, high-level ones here that we can talk a bit about. So the International Reg Tech Association is a non-for-profit um, driving force, so a large, uh, you know, it, it was, um, it, it's there to support the large network of firms, particularly um, technology providers who are trying to emerge themselves into this uh, area uh, and facilitating collaboration with um, the financial institutions who are really facing some of those high-level challenges um, that we've talked about. And the FCA is, is another uh, real leader in this space um, from a regulator's point of view. They have been working heavily within um, RegTech since kind of 2015, 2016. They've run 
whole number of hackathons or tech sprints that um, have called out particular challenges, particular um, uh, areas of regulatory compliance, uh, and they're really trying to drive um, uh, adoption of new technologies where they solve a particular challenge. And I myself have been involved in a number of these tech sprints, and they're really great. Um, they're really great at facilitating um, the network of large institutions who have problems and um, innovative solution providers and technology firms who create real value in solving those problems. And there are many more I initiatives, and I would encourage you to go out, uh, find some, and, and really get involved as much as possible. Um, so just finally, um, a last slide on, on, on myself and my firm. So, uh, my firm Cube, we actually have a solution and drive adoption of of, reg, of a reg change management platform, which solves that first use case that we talked about. We are doing and using many of the AI techniques that I've just spoken about um, to, to process that. We're capturing the regulatory content via web spidering. We're classifying them against semantic ontologies, providing deep insight on the impact analysis and change. A large customer base. And we have a vast amount of regulatory data, which we're automating the process for and driving that value proposition down for reg change management. So we're, we're there. I'm at my 40 minutes. Um, I'd like to thank you all for your time. And I'm going to open up the floor uh, for any questions. We do have a few already. Um, and I'll bring Lucy back in so we can, we can, we can manage those questions. Great. Thanks, Elia. Um, yeah, we've got some really great questions coming through. So firstly, um, let's go with this one. So what's the human's role in um, an AI-driven system? So will AI eventually replace the human role? That's a great question. I think uh, there's various ways you can, you can look at this. I, I think ultimately there are a number of processes um, that occur within a large financial institution within compliance that could well be fully automated. And you know, we've already spoken about some of them today. So for instance, the, simply the collection um, and the structuring and the processing of new regulation, I think that's, that's a, a ripe area that could be fully automated using um, structured spidering and, and collecting content, structuring it, and housing it in large um, uh, big data, data stores, processing it against regulatory ontologies, using NLP to extract the meaning from the content. I think. Uh, you know, and understanding the initial impact assessment, I think that's a hugely um, automated process that, that, that could benefit from some of the artificial intelligence techniques we've looked at. But then again, I think there are some, some high-value human um, processes that uh, take a lot of judgment into effect. So for instance, um, where an AI machine would be able to tell you what a regulation is talking about and where it's likely to impact your business, perhaps uh, a human would have a, a more well have a better understanding of which markets they may want to go into given particular scenarios, uh, which markets they want to close. So I think there are definitely areas that um, within financial services compliance that will be fully automated, but there will always be a need for the right uh, legal interpretation, uh, the right business choices to be made. Um, that really uh, that high level um, and high value tasks. Um, that humans will, will maintain. Right, thank you. Um, I think you covered this question a little bit in uh, talking about the uh, management of regulatory change, but um, how can AI help us to find out about any new regulations? So, mm. so what's kind of coming up in the pipe? I mean, that's, a, that's also a great question. So one of, the, one of the best ways that AI can help us do that is, is, is to um, is to leverage machine learning on top of the semantic analysis that we're doing. So where, where we build um, a semantic engine to help us understand what regulatory concepts exist today, what we really need as well is the level of automation, a level of learning on top of that um, vocabulary to tell us what the new requirements will be tomorrow. Right? So, and this is a great example where a cat that can the audit trail is, is a relatively new um, you know, in financial services anyway, regulatory concept that's come out um, and is being implemented across different areas of the, the organization. So, so we can leverage our current understanding of regulation and regulatory requirements through semantics, and we can then enable 
machine and deep learning on top of that to do huge text processing of new content that's coming out and fill in the gaps where they start to occur within the semantics of, of, the, um, of the ontology to, to build a, a kind of cyclic, cyclical uh, process where regulation is processed, new regulatory concept, concepts are identified, they're placed into the ontology, the regulation is pre-processed again, and then the analysis and impact assessment is conducted. Great, thank you. So we're running slightly over time, but this is such a great question, and we need to squeeze it in. <laughs> so under regulations such as um, MIFID II, for example, it's no longer sufficient to just monitor for actual fraudulent trading practices. Firms also need to be able to monitor communications for intent to commit market abuse um, throughout a trade or transaction life cycle. So how can AI predict future behavior or misconduct? Uh, it's it's a great question. I mean, we, we kind of touched on it in one of the in one of the kind of higher level examples we talked about in terms of monitoring market abuse, uh, and this is a key one. So, so trade surveillance is is, is a big uh, area in compliance at the moment, and it has been for for a number of years, especially since uh, in the in MAGMAR has been published another uh, regulation on on uh, market abuse and trade surveillance. One of the key areas here is, is understanding and leveraging um, uh, our understanding of the regulatory obligations and imp implementing um, sufficient NLP processes and speech pat pattern recognition processes to to identify the um, to identify the ways in which um, misconduct occurs. And what I mean by that is is um, we need to be able to flag up. Um, suspicious instances where um, organizations or people within organizations are, are engaged in misconduct. A great example I was told by a particular vendor who, who's, who's a, a kind of an emerging um, actor in the space of, um, in the space of uh, market abuse was that they, using some of their AI processes, were able to ingest a whole series of, of the bank's um, data that isn't typically provided or available to these kinds of solutions. So not only were they obviously monitoring the trades themselves and the trading floor, they were also monitoring the HR systems and the internal security system of the bank itself. And what they were able to detect was that a particular trader would um, get up out of his chair, he would walk over to the end of the room, he would swipe himself out of the trading floor, he would then take a phone call for 30 seconds on WhatsApp, uh, go back into the trading floor, and then place a big order. And what they would notice is that he would have this pattern. He would go out, he would get on the court, he would get on a phone call off, off the train floor, come back and place a large order. So that, that, that's a suspicious um, series of of activities that are really independent. You know, trading system, a security door system, you know, WhatsApp call, et cetera, et cetera. But it, they were able to integrate all of these feeds into a central solution and say, ah, this is a pattern that's suspicious to us, um, which is which is a really great use of of ingesting many different types of, of um, monitoring software uh, and, and kind of processing all of that information and finding that needle in a haystack, right? Hundreds and thousands of traders doing many different things, swiping to go to the bathroom all the time, but identifying that one strand um, was very impressive. That's great. Thank you. Okay, I think we're out of time now. So, um, yeah, Dawa, thank you for um, to everybody for taking the time to listen, and thank you, Elliot. That was a fantastic presentation, really interesting. No worries. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. I um, uh, hope it was informative. And uh, if you do have any questions, please, please let us know. Thank you very much.